Hello, welcome to the Studio Speaker Series. Um, today we're having our Lunch and Learn. Uh, for um, every Tuesdays, we have our Founder Stories, and on Thursdays is our Business Series. More about that on that later on. Um, but if you, um, the applications for the Founders Program have now been closed. But if you are interested to hire our facilities or our event spaces, please go to our revamped website and under bookings page, you will find what we have to offer. Without further ado, let's get on to today's Lunch and Learn, creating irresistible online marketing with Krista Hall from Basic Bananas. Krista? Hey, 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 thanks for having me. Just making sure I'm coming through. Hey guys, and welcome to the, uh, today's session. So thanks um, so much for having me and thanks to the studio. Uh, for putting on the, the session. Of course, everything we can do to assist small businesses and, uh, well, any size of businesses really um, have enough challenges, especially right now. So I'm more than happy to, to uh, help however I can as well. Um, just, um, I'm going to roll through. So today's content um, in terms of online marketing is, it has never been more relevant than now. Uh, a lot of businesses are kind of rushing to try and try and do things online, which, you know, maybe could have been done a little bit earlier or, um, or they finally have time to actually, I guess, implement the things, you know, that they've wanted to implement for a long time. Um, as I go throughout the session, I'll, we'll, there'll be questions later on the session. So feel free to post any questions. I think if, if the Q and A tab is being used or, um, or chat and we'll check in on those later towards the end, but I'll roll through the content and, um, and you guys, the um, kind of co-hosts, if you want to sing out, just let me know at any point in time or if there's any question relevant to any of the content that I'm going through, just uh, interrupt me at any point in time uh, if there's any questions, you know, um, that I need to answer there and then. Cool. So um, without further ado, uh, creating irresistible online marketing, um, the whole thing with uh, the world of of online, just something I like to say uh, up front when it comes to marketing in general. Um, we've worked, well, we fought very fortunate uh, have, to have had the opportunity to work with hundreds of different businesses uh, as Basic Bananas. Uh, my business throughout the years in all different styles of businesses, whether it's products or services or business to business or business to consumer, uh, all different styles of businesses. And the reality is, all of the marketing you do nowadays really leads to online marketing. Now, uh, like as in, even if you meet someone face to face, let's say uh, when, uh, when the, the studio can have the um, uh, uh, networking events again and you meet someone face to face, uh, if they are interested in proceeding with you or, or seeing whether they actually want to proceed with you and potentially working with you, they'll usually go online, you know? And so you'll actually get a better return from that conversation with someone that's as offline as you can get by having a better online presence as well, you know, to see if they want to, because that's where they go to see if they want to proceed with you. They'll likely open your website and a couple of your competitors or Google you or check out your social media. They basically go online to see if they want to proceed. So um, I just wanted to say that up front, the, the reality is we're looking at online specifically uh, with today's content. However, this will help you with all of your marketing to get a better return with everything you do when it comes to um, all of your marketing, even repeat sales, you know, getting more referrals and things, the better our online marketing is, um, the more we'll get. So I'll go through some different ways and give you some really practical things that you can implement. And basically I'm 100% certain if you implement the things I go through today, you will see a, an increase in your business, you'll see better results. Um, the, the reality is, and everything I teach is no theory. I'm not really one that's into theory. I like to see like tried and tested practical things and we don't teach anything that we don't do ourselves. So um, you can know this has been tested with a lot of businesses and, and implemented. My name's Christo, you, you've got it probably there on the screen anyway. It's Christo Hall and the business is Basic Bananas. Um, that's our, our you know, main business. I'll scribble my name up here. Might be a little bit hard to see if you're watching today's session on a mobile phone or something like that and the screen's tiny. Uh, but my name's Christo and the, the business I'm most known for is Basic Bananas. Basic Bananas um, is, is kind of like marketing mentoring for business owners and, uh, and marketers of small businesses where we help them 
grow their brand and basically get more customers through through smart and clever ways to market their business and their products and so on. Um, this is a little bit of the team. This is part of the team. We, had, we took the team to uh, Port Douglas for a team retreat. We do a, an annual team retreat where we all go away and um, we get as many as with the team as we can. There were 20 here, but the team are about 35. But um, from all around the world, some of the guys here from Canada, Philippines, America. But anyway, um, we have a good time at Basic Bananas. And, and I, I like to share that often um, part of the whole kind of culture of, the, of a business and part of your brand is what will also make you, you know, an attractive brand. So not really today's concept, but I just wanted to touch on that as well. And often you might have heard about um, basic bananas somewhere along the line um, through through different marketing activities that we do. Um, now, the in terms of today's uh, content, if you do want to share something, and I recommend this, um, this studio would be cool to to uh, tag those guys in too. If, what I always recommend, uh, and there's a little lesson in this as well, is if you enjoy something from the session as we're going throughout. Um, do a little, maybe an Instagram story or something like that. Get, grab your phone because we're kind of presenting and it's cool for the guys, you know, running the studio. They're always kind of like presenting, putting content out. But um, it's cool to see the other side, you know, like if you're sitting there in your kind of home office or you're there in your pyjamas or you've got a mask on and you're, you know, in an office, whatever. Um, take a little like selfie and whack it on social media and make sure you tag in um, the studio on any of their social media handles. And also I like to see it. So you could tag, you know, at Basic Bananas or myself at Christo Hall um, and hashtag Basic Bananas, but tag us in, you know, so we can see it. And then what's likely to happen is, you know, you're likely to it's get, get reshared by us and by the studio as well. So um, uh, make sure you share it. It's cool to see what's happening on the other side um, for you. And, and I'll give you the little lesson I was going to say on this one when it comes to kind of marketing in general is, um, being clear on what you want people to say as well. This is just like a little lesson in terms of what I'm doing here with a hashtag. If you use hashtag basic bananas and tag basic bananas in, what that does is each time we'll present, we'll tell people to do the same thing, right? So it develops more and more of a presence. Now, this is just a, a little tiny example of this. You want to be showing and telling your customers what you want them to say about you and how you want them to say it, not just online, but in all, you know, even verbally so that you become known for things. Um, and that's what marketing is often all really about. It's being really clear on what you want to be known for so that as you push anything out to the world, you develop more of a presence. You become known for something. And um, you're never going to be really known for like 10 different things. It's going to be usually just one or two things. So we've got to be specific on what we want to be known for. And we push it out through every touch point, even like how you talk about the business, you know, even what's on your invoice or um, uh, yeah, every single. And so because the, the, the reality is most businesses that we, when we start working with them uh, in more depth, they don't, they don't know themselves what they want to be known for. Often the business owner themselves don't even really know what they want their business to be known for. And every industry is very competitive. So there's got to be something that makes you cut through. Otherwise you're going to have a, you know, a very hard time. Um, which leads into this point being talk aboutable. Uh, I know my, my screen might be kind of hard for you guys to see uh, because it's obviously going to be a bit smaller. Um, you can on these sessions, if you click on the top right of my little box thing, if you can see all the box equally, you can click pin video and it should come up as the full screen, uh, my one. But anyway, um, what we have here is just a few different media kind of clippings. It's like me and some of the business magazines and so on and presenting and on Channel 9, um, Today Show. Uh, presenting at Vivid, uh, my business, different business magazines. And anyway, but um, the, um, the point is we're not the only marketing business out there in the world, right? But we position ourselves as different intentionally. So we always have um, points of difference that we're pushing out through every touch point. And the reason I'm saying this is because as we're, we're going to go into practical, like things that you do online for your online marketing, but if you do the same as everyone else and it looks the same as everyone else and you're one of, you know, like most people when it comes time to post on social media or something, they're like, oh, what do I do? You know, I'll, um, do I just do the same as last week, the week before I'll post another inspirational quote or something? And it all becomes very bland. You know, it all becomes very boring. It's like the same flavor <laughs> over and over and over. We need to have things that make us slightly different, different personality in terms of our brand. Um, different things we highlight so we become known for something. It's like we wouldn't get all this media. We wouldn't get asked to 
present and share. Um, I get uh, invited, like I've been, I feel like I've been blessed in my life in terms of like finding, you know, points of difference and being invited around the world before the pandemic, being invited around the world to present at different business events. Um, there was a big event by a, a kind of arm from Flight Centre that took me to Bali uh, last year for a, pre a presentation, you know, um, Sam, Santa Barbara in the States as well. Uh, another one in Costa Rica, an American business event, like all these different events to get flown in and um, to present as a, as a business expert. Uh, now, because people see something different about us and that's, that's what I want to touch on here. So and I'll go through how we do this. Obviously I won't leave you, uh, leave you hanging, but um, I just wanted to make that clear up front. You kind of have to be, it's only a little bit different. You've only got to be like, you know, maybe 5% different to your competitors, just a little something, even if your products and services are the same, because the reality is everyone's great. You know, all the competitors are great. Um, but it's those things that get inside people's heads. It's almost like you want to start to own uh, trigger thoughts. So when your prospective customers have a, a recurring thought, it triggers your brand, it brings your brand to mind because you've amplified you're the go-to for that trigger thought enough that when people start to have that thought, they start to think of you. Um, cool. Now, like the examples where even when we post on social media, you know, like, one, like this is an example. It says, sometimes things get a little silly at the office. Um, what's something funny that happened in your business? Let us know in the comments because part of our point of difference is we want to have fun with everything we're doing. Um, I believe fun is a sustainable part of business. Uh, if we're not having fun, I'd, I'd rather be, you know, sitting on a beach in Bali under a palm tree <laughs> for the rest of my days. But I like to infuse fun and we even have uh, one of our team members, part of her role uh, is um, uh, team happiness. It's like, a, so she has to like organize fun things to do and stuff. So, um, but anyway, so even with so posts and things, it's like, okay, we're doing something. How do we put a little bit of fun in this? Because that's part of our point of difference um, in terms of what we do. Uh, just as an example, this one's an example of one of our, just every single touch point. This one's not, not exactly online marketing, but I'll, um, I'll share it anyway. One of a, a mechanic that we worked with, what he started doing when we're saying, look, you've got to just amplify this, these little, little points of difference to push out um, something different to your competitors. He started sending a thank you card after he would service people's cars, like he's a car mechanic, and he'd put an oily thumbprint on a card and then he'd turn it into a little drawing where he might say, you know, um, you know please accept this uh, oily thumbprint drawing of a fish as a sign of our appreciation. We think you're awesome, you know, appreciate your business. And then when he'd send these cards, people would share it on social media. He basically said once he sends one of these cards, um, that customer will come back. You know, it's just this little little point of difference compared to every other mechanic. Here's your bill, pay, buy, you know. Um, so um, just one of the many things we did with him. Now what I'll share here, this is um, partly then how we take what we want to be known for and how we differentiate through online. We basically create these different kind of segments. We're calling these content buckets. Uh, I'll read these out. It might be hard to see my screen here, but so what I mean by this is when you're going, before we even get to say, let's say posting on social media or, um, or if you already are, that's fine, you know, creating articles or video tips or a podcast or whatever marketing strategies you're using, we basically want to create themes that we operate within. So the reason being is let's say you own a, uh, a pizza shop. You can't just post pizza every day if you've got 10, 10 varieties of pizza you know you're gonna it's gonna get very boring to follow you can't just post pizza but what we'll do is create different themes that you post around and you share content around so what i mean is one might be pizza one might be um the history of pizza and you find historical facts around pizza or something one could be about your team a content theme where it's like team activities you know or and one could be around health if that's part of the personality of your brand so when you are say i'll say like if you were posting let's say it's an easy way to kind of get our get our uh, head around this then what you do is you're not just posting about pizza one day you might post about pizza the next day you're posting about the team who make the pizzas and maybe their hobbies you know or their their outside um uh, interests or something like that then the next day you're posting about a history you know a quirky fact about the history of pizza so you get the idea um so you can mix up the the content so for example just some examples, team culture, uh, leadership, like even for us, 
say if I use basic bananas as an example, we help people with their marketing and we, we basically mentor them to, to grow their business and help them with their marketing. But one of our content buckets is leadership. The themes, we call them content buckets, but it's a, if you want to call it a theme, but um, is leadership. We don't sell leadership. We don't, we're not like leadership consultants or something like that. Um, however, our market, our audience and our customers, they are interested in leadership right in how to be a good leader leadership strategy leadership skills they want to become better leaders so it's of interest to them so we're not always just posting like buy marketing from us you know or here's our programs or here's marketing tip 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 there's like leadership ideas leadership strategies great examples of leadership um, because it's of interest to our audience marketing is another one of course for us products and services so it could be uh could be for you sustainability is one for us because part of our brand is we want to try and leave the world a better place, you know, than we, than we found it ideally. So one of our teams has a split role where part of her role is um, sustainability, finding ways for us to continually be more sustainable and share ideas with our customers and our network because we have a good big following, uh, you know, an audience, our database around 60,000 and all our followings on social media and um, all these business people that often have a team of within them we can create quite an impact when we find better ways to do business more sustainably. So that's one of our themes, uh, as an example. Um, members' success stories, uh, like customer case studies, oh, and, um, and inspirational quotes can be a last one. So on that, the content buckets, obviously you need to be tailoring them for yourself and thinking for yourself so that as you create online content, it's not always gonna be the same. Now, the kind of, Three big areas I like to look at. Like this is kind of like the overview approach to how I see online marketing is working. We're using it to grab attention. And then what we want to do is basically build community, step two, and engage people. And then we're looking to own them because the reality is those social media platforms, online ads, all these Google, we don't own those platforms. We're never going to own them. So they can change their algorithm overnight or they can pull down your ads or they can you know, you've changed your, how Instagram uh, reaches people and audiences and then suddenly it doesn't work for you anymore. And you might've spent so much time and energy building that thing and then it disappears. It's not your real estate. So we're looking to get attention and start to engage people enough that we can actually drive them off that platform to our own real estate, which will typically be your, your website. So I'll show you how this kind of looks. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me just make sure I've got this slide up. Yeah. I'll just share my whole screen because it'll make it easier on me. Um, what we have here, this one. Um, now, what you'll see here on the screen now is basically it's a, a, a slide with um, this kind of overview of, of, of online marketing. Now, what we have here on the left, Traffic, this is the, the, the kind of five columns we break um, online marketing up into. So traffic on the left, what this is, this is all the platforms like social media, Facebook ads, beta ads. You can see we're breaking it into two, two categories of free and paid. Now, obviously there are a lot, a lot more things we can put under these headings, but there's just an example. But this is how you want to review your online marketing. You review how to get traffic. Now, the goal with that column is over time to try and get more traffic for less. So we're looking to grow the traffic that moves to our real estate, which will be our website. On the website, the ideal thing we want to happen is we want people to, to buy, right? We want them to, to move towards a sale. So you should look at your website and think, is it crystal clear for a red hot buyer, a, a number one kind of ideal prospect to know exactly what to do the second they land on your website? I mean, the second they land, like if they land on the homepage and your number one action you want people to take is to book a quote, you should have book a quote on the homepage, crystal clear right in front of them. So that's number one, move people towards the sale. If you want them to book a meeting, you have book a meeting on the homepage. If you want them to buy your most popular product, you have your most popular product sitting on the homepage. The next thing we want the website to do is if the website's converting people at about 2% towards that, that number one action towards a sale, that's a, a decent conversion rate at that point, which is terrible. And that's why I've just explained why 
most people have a very difficult time with online marketing because most people focus on traffic only. We think we need to improve our online marketing. So what do you think? You think, oh, we need to improve our, our social media. You know, we need to get better at the, the free stuff like the Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or doing more. Or we need to um, do some paid stuff, get a Google expert to do some Google ads or Facebook ads or, um, you know, write some SEO content, some, some search engine optimization work or something. Now, the reality is you're going to just push more traffic to a website that's lucky to convert 2% towards a sale. So most of the time you'll never see a return no matter what you're doing in the traffic column. And this is the number one mistake we see over and over and over again. If the website's not converting more than 2%, it doesn't matter how much traffic you put into it. And this is why people, and I'm sure a lot of you guys on this session, um, you know, this is probably a little bit close to home. You probably know you've spent a lot of time on some social media platforms and if you calculated how much money you've actually got in terms of sales from that stuff, you know, it could be quite terrifying. <laughs> or if you are, you know, you've paid for ads, a lot of you probably paid for ads at some point and people click the ads, but not enough of them converted once they landed on the website towards a sale to justify continually running the ads or, you know, to increase the budget. And now you can see why now. So what we need on the website are some other pathways. The website should also have a, a clear opt-in um, I won't go to like, I'll, I'll show you what happens with the opt-in in a second. The, um, cause I'll go through what happens with that. We call that an opt-in funnel. Um, and it also should have just before I go through the opt-in funnel, it should have remarketing. So it should have the ads that follow people around online. So if people land on the website and they might look at your website and two of your competitors websites, but they go away, your ads will then follow them around. They're those kind of like stalking ads that follow people around online, the remarketing ads. So you want those set up so that you get more people clicking them and coming back to your site because you spent something to get them there in the first place. So we need remarketing set up as well. Now, what will happen then is um, we want to process as those uh, people might opt in, then we want to process to try and move them towards, um, you know, phone calls, emails, invites, offers, uh, which will move people into a sales funnel. I'll explain in a moment. And then also we need a relationship process, looking at the relationship column. Uh, basically, you need to be have regular content because a, a really important thing to remember here is if only 2% are ready to move towards a sale when they land, there may be another 10, even 20% of them that will buy at some point. It's just not right now. We all go through this decision-making period and for some people it might take a week, two weeks, some people might take three years to actually make a decision to buy your product or service. So you wanna make sure you've nurtured that relationship. So you need a process to basically, the questions, so I'll go through that uh, nurture funnel in a moment as well. Uh, what do we put in that column? And then wake up, this is basically, we need to spike people's interest to get them to come back and engage and buy from you. So with offers, invites, uh, could be webinars, special events, things like that. Uh, I'll go through that, that we call that a reactivation funnel. So I'll go through what we put into that one as well. So what I'll do, I'll keep the, uh, the screen as it is. So we'll look at the opt-in funnel, nurture funnel, reactivation funnel and sales funnel. First one, the opt-in. So this is where you have something on your website that looks something like this. It's a opt-in to get some free information some sort of uh, giveaway. We have a one page marketing plan on basicbananas.com. Um, you're welcome to go and opt into that to get to see how we do it as an example. Um, that's a nice subtle way for me to uh, invite you to join our, our mailing list. <laughs> but uh, you gotta have something with an opt in that's very specific and gives people specific benefits and they can see exactly what they're gonna get. If it says something like subscribe to our updates, it's too vague. It's like you have to say to them, you're getting this thing, you're getting it right now and here's what it, what it will do for you. Kind of like very specific opt-in. Like if you're a, a product business, you could have something that says something like, uh, you know, are you interested in buying a camera but you haven't got the faintest idea about megapixels, battery life or Zoom? It could have, don't download our seven step camera buying guide to make sure you buy the right camera, whether you buy from us or anyone else. You know, very specific, we've done the work for you. Or it could say something like, Let's say you're uh, like if you're an accountant, like you're a B2B service, you could say download our five top tax saving tips uh, checklist, you know, to make sure you're maximizing your tax return, you know, something like that. Uh, get instant access now. So people opt in. Then what happens? Then we want to build out this process. 
So people opt in, and this is just kind of a little flow chart to give you an idea. They opt in, they get the free thing. Right away, you'd want an email that goes out to them and it says, thank you. And here's that thing. So it gives them, so these are kind of like steps. So that's immediately, people put their details in, an email should go out to them and say, here's the thing I offered you. Um, and by the way, if you're a bit of an action taker, you invite them towards an offer. So it could say something like, here's that camera guide as promised. And by the way, here's our number one best selling camera. Do you want it? You ask for a sale. It could say, here's our, you know, a top three best selling cameras and $40 off if you'd like to, um, you know, grab one of these as a welcome to our community. You basically invite to a sale because this already by giving the free thing and then inviting towards the next step, you'll increase that number from 2% already because it's a low risk first step. And then we invite towards the next uh, step. Um, now, two days later, what, what is, this is just an optional one. Sometimes with businesses, we'll then say, look, maybe you want to give them a call so you could trigger a task. Uh, I'll show you the system we use to, to fire all this in the background uh, in a moment. But basically, you could trigger a call, you know, two days later or a day later, you call them and say, hey, just saw you got to the free resource on the website. Just wanted to make sure you got it and if you have any other questions. So it's a nice way to start to build the relationship in a low risk way. What we do two days after they've got that first email is we'd send a bonus. Now what we're doing, the reason we're doing a bonus, and this is a really important lesson. The bonus is to make friends and show them that you send good stuff via email. Most people get too many emails and they're full of like, you know, unimportant junk that people just feel they need to force out. Like the, the reality is everyone's inbox is crowded. So you've got to show them you send short, sharp, valuable content. So the bonus could be like, Hey, here's a little extra resource on X, you know, on the tax tips, or here's a little extra resource on the top, the, the top three lenses in the camera market. We've, we've done 40 hours of research to, by our experts to save you the time. These are the top three right now. You know, something, it's a short, sharp little bonus uh, that comes. It could be, here's a, here's a link to the, an article on our website that you'd be interested in considering you opted in for this thing. Um, now, reason again, so that people see, they open your email, they see you send good stuff. Uh, and they'll be more likely then to open future emails, right? What we can do, this is an optional extra, two days after that, so the first email will go immediately, second email will go day two, then two days after that, so it'll be day four, you could send an FAQ, frequently asked questions about buying from you, you know, or your top products or services. Hey, here's, a, here's an FAQ about our offering of da 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 because it's a nice engaging way to basically promote without looking too, uh, like, salesy. You can basically state questions because people can skim over it. They see questions that they have as concerns and then they see your responses. Um, so it's a nice way to, to uh, move people towards a sale there. And then what we'll do is we'll move them to the nurture sequence. So whether they, you know, they're bought or not, everyone ends up in the, the nurture sequence where we're basically keeping in contact with them, you know, for, the, for as long as we can. Uh, the nurture sequence, this one's one obviously for you to work out, but this is how do you build the relationship over time? It's a regular something <laughs> and that's it. So regular, because if it takes me six months to decide I actually want to buy your product or service, you have to keep yourself front and center of mind. So you have to nurture the relationship. It could be um, sending me a little fortnightly tip. It could be posting an article on your website once a a month or once a fortnight and you send a little preview via email that says, here's the little snippet about the latest article. If you want to read more, click back to the site, you know, and you could share that on social media as well. So basically your, your questions to answer are, what are you, what are you going to do? And what's your frequency? How are you going to stay in touch? Like we have a, uh, a week ahead email that we send to basic bananas um, audience. The week ahead will say, um, Hey, what's on? You know, we've got marketing smarts opening soon. One of our online programs, um, we've got a PJ, we call it the PJ edition because we run these um, online events where, you know, most people working from home nowadays are in their pajamas. <laughs> so we called it the, the PJ edition and that's Instagram strategies for business. So a free online event, if you want to join it, Hey, here's a little, a little tip, uh, simple exercise that will change your business. Um, uh, you know, basically from uh, Francisca, you know, like sharing um, a, a little tip. So it's just this regular something, little valuable tips and things. So people can skim over the email 
it's not a really long email. It's almost like a little summary we send so people can look at it and go, oh yeah, I'm interested in that this week or I'm not interested, you know, or maybe this one like, yeah, Instagram sounds good. I'm interested in how to get, do Instagram better or I'm not, you know, it's a really easy for people to skim. Um, so they tend to stay on the, uh, the database for longer than, without opting out. I just share one other uh, example of one here, which is because um, sometimes people, this is an example of a, uh, a wedding dress maker who's a, uh, a past customer of, of ours of basic bananas and um, I share her because sometimes people say what can how can we extend something regular you know stay in touch when people only buy what we sell once anyway you know like typically people buy a wedding dress well once <laughs> not always but uh, you know the um, they don't buy them frequently so with her um, what she does is she shares a love story of one from one of her customers each month, you know, as a little nurture sequence. So people stay subscribed, then they refer their friends, you know, they like her, they might come back and buy an evening gown or different, different styles of dresses and things. The next funnel we need is, so let's say you're nurturing people in your database and over time, you basically want to make a sale here and there, right? So let's say, you, you, you're growing your, your audience, they're opting in. Um, I'll just say that actually, just a, a little side note, in term, with the opt-in, what it does for you by having that, that um, opt-in funnel, number one, and giving away that free thing on the side, is it lowers the barrier to entry. This is really important because most websites, when you land on them, as I said before, um, if the only way people can proceed is by like using the contact form or, or calling the business or, or like booking in or buying, you know, basically moving towards a sale, it's a big jump. It's a massive leap for people that haven't worked with you before. And that's why we only get around, you know, you go to around 2% if you're doing well, because it's such a big hurdle for people. So by having the opt-in, it lowers the barrier to entry. It's lower risk. You know, they can do it in their pajamas from home at, at midnight. They can opt in, get something from you, see if it looks valuable, see if it looks like you know your stuff. You know, it starts this dialogue in a lower risk way. So now what's, as we're building that audience and then we're nurturing the relationship with that audience over time, every now and then we want to reactivate them. Now, reactivation is where we run a promotion. Just on this point, um, you typically, what I'd say to you is try to aim to do 10 times building the relationship for every one time you promote. As a general rule across, you know, different industries. Uh, the reason being is if you're always promoting, 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 like sell, 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 people will lose interest in following you, you know, stop opening e emails. So we try and be like 10 times more valuable for every one time you promote. Your goal is to basically become their trusted advisor rather than someone that's just like sell, sell, sell. So here we go with a reactivation. What a nice way we've worked, you know, basically worked out to promote just about anything, um, no matter what the style of business is. You give an announcement of the promotion. It could be two ways. You either counting down till the promotion ends. So it could be like, a, um, you know, here's this promotion that runs till the end of um, October, for example or it could be a countdown that's counting down till the day the sale happens. So this could be like sale starts here, you know, it's Boxing Day or Valentine's Day or something like that, sale. Um, so the way it looks is like this. We send an invite two weeks before, a reminder one week before, a reminder three days before, uh, a reminder 24 hours before and a reminder on the day. Now we found this to be the perfect balance where we promote and we maximize our sales, but we don't, like annoy people so much that they don't want to follow you anymore. So then we take the calendar out and it looks like this. We go, okay, here's the closed close of sale day or open, you know, shopping cart day kind of thing. Um, so we might be running an event and we'll say early bird promotion finishes on this date. We send notice two weeks before, one week before, three days before. So we need to schedule emails that go out on those days. Um, if you have a longer lead time, like you have to give people notice of way further in advance, then you just go in two week intervals before this initial two weeks and you'd start to seed the promotion in your nurture sequence, the regular uh, relationship building sequence. So you map it out on the calendar like this. So you're not just leaving it all up in the air of when to promote what. You've got clear idea when you're going to send out each promotion. Then what we do is we open five Word docs and we work out what's in each email. So we can see the whole promotion sitting in front of us. So this will be the email number one is the email that goes two weeks before, 
This is email for one week before. Um, so email number one might say, hey, we've got this special event coming up. Here's a quick video of you know, me explaining da, 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 how to join. The next email might say, hey, we sent this invite last week. I just want to make sure you got it. In case you missed it, here it is. And we basically copy this and paste it here. Then the one um, that goes out three days before, we pretty much the same thing. Hey guys, we've got this, this promotion coming up. There's only three days to, you know, remaining. Here's the invite in case you missed it. Then we'll send one 24 hours before. Hey, this thing's closing tomorrow. I want to make sure you got it. And then the last one is on the day it closes. This thing closes at 5 p.m. today. And we have a countdown timer in there, so don't miss out. And this will generate sales. I run these sequences for when I've been like snowboarding and things like that and not even online because I pre-scheduled all the emails to go and then looking at the sales in the evening and it basically just runs like clockwork. Um, if you want to include things like the countdown timer, you know, and it's a beautiful way to just lay them out like that. So you're not just doing them in a system where it, like can't see how each email connects and relates. Um, and then from these, we basically just copy these and then we paste them into a, you know, our email marketing system and, uh, and let them fire off. Um, if you want to include a um, countdown timer, the tool, a little tool I like to use for those is this um, motion mail app and you can use it for free. And basically it just, it, it counts down the, you know, you put in what date and time you want the thing to count down and expire. And uh, that'll just click away live in the emails. And also if you want to include um, uh, like emojis in emails, it says email stuff for, uh, dot org forward slash glyph. That one will give you little snippets of code in case you want to put like, um, let's say you're setting up an email with an email marketing program or you're on your, your computer, you know, it's not like when you're on your phone, you can add emojis really easy, you know, the, the emoji icons there, but you want an email to go out. Uh, the emojis are great to capture attention, get people's eyes. Even if you're doing bullet points in, a, in an email, you could swap it out for emojis. Um, and there's another name for emojis is glyph. Um, so that's why that's glyph. Uh, but that's where it gives you the little, these tiny little, you can basically search anything on there. Like you could search, you know, surf and it'll come up with a little surf emoji. It says paste this little bit of code. If it's a subject line, if it's an email, you know, da, 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 you get the idea. Um, so that's if you want, uh, uh, which I do recommend for those kind of, any of your nurture emails and also your promotion uh, emails there as well. Uh, now the next process here, the next one, I know I'm giving you guys a lot of info here. <laughs> um, and basically, if you just implement one part of each one of these funnels that I'm showing you, you'll uh, you'll be kind of leaps and bounds ahead of the uh, the the rest, most likely in your industry. So uh, so bear with me, and I'll um, I'll uh, I'll come I'll come back to any questions too in a moment. Um, I'll give you I'll give you a run through of this one, and then I'll come back to any questions. I saw one one pop in the Q and A a second ago. Um, but basically, this this sales funnel, this one is what are you going to do when uh, let's say you've made a sale basically to maximize return. So you've made a sale and this doesn't have to be just for an online business. Like some, some of you guys on today's session will have like online businesses where you, um, you know, you basically like an e-commerce business and you sell online. Some of you, not at all, you know, like, like us, we're, we, we sell through a lot of online but we're not an online, you know, like um, e-commerce business, for example, but you do want to be leveraging online, for, um, you know, no matter what style of business you have. And even if you're purely like a offline, like you're a landscape gardener and you work face to face, you'd still want to replicate this process that I'm going to go through after you make a sale. So this is for everyone, no matter what style of business you have. After you make a sale, what we want to build out is a little, basically like a funnel that sends a, hey, thanks for your purchase. So this comes via email and an upsell. Now you could call it an upsell, a downsell, a cross sell, whatever sell you wanna call it. You basically let them know about something else you offer. The reason you do that is you will sell more. Now, a very important point on this as well is, most people think you're, that their customers know everything they sell. Even if you sold wedding dresses and you don't sell anything else and someone bought a wedding dress, the upsell could be a referral to the, the jeweler down the road and the jeweler gives you a commission on sales that you refer their way or the shoe shop, you know, that you refer. Um, the decorator, you know, the wedding photographer. Like 
You, or you have your own upsells where you say, anyone who buys anything will send an email that also has these three other offerings to make sure they know about it. Because the reality is most people, when they buy from you, they come in with kind of, it's like they've got the, um, the blinkers on, they come on in and they've got a narrow focus on what they want. They don't look, browse around everything else you sell. It's like on um, e-commerce websites when it says, you know, you buy something and it says, people who bought this were also interested in this, you know, these things. They do that because it, it just sells like a little percentage, maybe if, even if you get 5% of people who buy the first thing that go on and buy the second, that extra second sale comes at zero extra marketing expense. Often it'll come at less um, time because if, you've, if it takes you a, a bit of time to make a sale, like you have to have a conversation, um, the sales process to talk people through, the upsell doesn't involve all that extra time and that extra headache and that extra like pressure of, I'll oh, call them now or talk back to them. You know, the sales process is already done. So that upsells a little icing on the cake. So we always want to make sure we have other offerings, basically like we're selling in sequence. When someone buys something, what else could they, could they get? Then two days later, similar to what we did with the opt-in funnel is we want to have an extra bonus. So some sort of bonus, like two days after where we say, Hey, here's an extra little resource. Like if you were a little landscape gardener, it's a little extra email that comes out and says, um, here are the, you know, to our top plant of pots that we see at the moment and, um, and a little uh, tip in on how to build a veggie garden, you know, or something like here's a, here's a link to our um, resource or five different articles we've created. We know you're going to love one of them, you know, if not all, and you have a little, little preview on each, just a little summary. So it's a little bonus email where people go, Oh, that's awesome. Extra value. It could be that you sell bicycles and then you send a tip that says, you know, here's the, the, the process on how to maintain your bike or keep it um, oiled and, and maintenance so that to, to perform at, you know, peak all the time. Uh, two days after that, we'd want an automated email that goes out and invites people to refer a friend. Now you want this as part of your process because by having any sale you make should be invited to an upsell and should be invited to refer a friend. This one comes out and says, you know, trust you're enjoying our product or service. Um, it could say something like, you know, you're, an, you're, a great, you're a great customer for ours and we think you might know other great people, you know, like yourself. And if you do, we'd love it if you could let them know about our product or service. If you have some sort of offer that you could give them to pass on, like a discount or some sort of thing or a voucher or something, you could do that there as well. Um, then the next thing we do, and because the reason often people assume if someone loves your product or service, they're going to go on and refer you, but it's obviously not the case. Everyone's busy doing their own thing. So we need to make sure we have that uh, built in. And then they move to the nurture sequence. So even everyone, whether they've bought, they've opted in or however they've ended up in your database, they all go into the nurture sequence and then you'll, uh, the nurture funnel, and then you'll have a, um, you know, a reactivation promotion from time to time. Um, just the program we use, I'll just touch on that and then I'll, I'll open up for questions in a second. Um, the program that we use is called Entreport. Often people want to know what database do you use? Um, there are a lot of different offerings out there. If you're on something that works for you already, stick with it. Uh, if you do want to check out Entreport, we are a referral partner of theirs. Basically, we get a little commission when people uh, uh, sign up if they use our link. Uh, but also, we've um, convinced them <laughs> to give something extra if people use our link. So you get three support hours from them helping you set up um, and basically different funnels we've already created within their program. It's basically a CRM like email marketing and email automation and uh, uh, well, it does a lot on report, but basically um, good system to use for your, your, your marketing uh, and your database. Um, if you, yeah, and basically if people who use our link and then, and then register, you don't pay any more. Um, but you'll get three hours of support from them to help you uh, get set up. And also you'll get, get all of our funnels automatically pulled into your account. So you can just tweak them and basically make them your own. Um, so our link's basicbananas.com forward slash entreport. It'll just take you to their homepage and then you can uh, check it out. They have a free trial. If anyone does jump on and register, let, let uh, Basic Bananas team know too, because I'll give you a personal invite. I mean, personal uh, intro to, um, their Australian support. They're an American business, but they'll give you an intro to uh, Australian support. And that way you can, um, you know, you, you'll get looked after because they love us because we refer so much business to them. <laughs> but if you do use that, um, please do use our, our links because so we get a little, you know, at least a little something, a uh, little uh, kickback there is cool. Now I'm going to click off um, 
screen share for a second. Let me just make sure I don't turn you off. There you go. And I'm going to uh, click through to just check there were some questions. I think, hey, yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Chris. You have shared a lot of um, tips and tricks and also some of the platforms that you've been using. So let's address some of the questions that have popped in the Q&A box. So first off, um, so Hi, Chris. When you're trying to build a relationship with potential clients through newsletters, how do we avoid being a bit too spammy? Or uh, yes. uh, to the point that the potential client would just unsubscribe? Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one for everyone. <laughs> good question. Um, the, the whole thing is you don't want, like often people ask me things like how frequently should I do it? Should I do it weekly? Should I do it fortnightly, monthly? The reality is if you can't send something, if you don't have something of kind of value, don't, don't send it is usually like um, my, my tip on this one. The, um, and the reality is keep it short. Like most people, it depends on your audience. If your audience is someone that wants to read long newsletters, um, but the good news for most of us is most of our audiences don't want long newsletters. They might want just something short, sharp with a tip of value um, and something of value. The, the, the reality is, you got to know who you're talking to, like clear on who your audience are. So you've got that kind of like profile of who's that ideal customer so that everything you're doing is talking to them. It's of interest to them. It's a value to them. If you're kind of trying to talk to everyone, this is where you tend to do bland kind of like boringy um, stuff. And that's, that's, so we need to make sure we've got, you know, things of value. Like even, I'll give you a little example on this one, even with a, um, there's a, um, a Mac, Apple Mac um, reseller up the road here in, in, I'm on the Northern Beaches in Sydney. Our office here is in, in Narrabeen. And, um, and we used to get all our Macs. So we have a whole office here um, and, and all our computers from Chatswood, from the massive Mac store. And I thought that's the best place to go because we have a business account and they apparently look after us. I don't know, think they give us any discount or anything, but whatever they do, they have us on file. And, um, and so I was like, go direct there. And then one day we got a, um, a computer serviced by the Mac reseller up the road. And then I got a little, like a little fix done to one of them. And then I got an email, I got, was added to their, so their newsletter. And the email, it had some things promoting, but it had one little gold nugget. It had a little tip, which was at the time, like if you click on a file and you press space bar, it lets you preview the tip. It was just this little, basically like a, a tip on how to use a Mac, like little Mac shortcut. This little tip I still use and it's kept me on their newsletter now for about seven years. After about two years of getting their newsletter, when the team we needed, we got basically about six new IMAX at one point, I was like, you know what? Let's get them from the guys up the road. Like from this, because they'd stayed in my mind because their emails have one little tip in them. Each, each email, there's one little gold nugget that keeps me subscribed. It's a little shortcut. You know, half the time I know them now, but I still stay subscribed because I'm like, there might be some little little tip. Um, so yeah, you get the idea. By providing value, knowing who you're talking to uh, mm -hmm. and providing value is the, uh, the key on there. Mm -hmm. some, yeah. some kind of little discoveries that um, you can slip into your newsletters, I suppose. Yeah. And I think the next question is relevant. Uh, somehow you've answered this one. Is there anything you would recommend to minimize unsubscribers? Yeah, just just that. Like at mm -hmm. least there's always yeah. something. Even in a, even in any like even if it was say a um, promotional email, you could use the PS. Often the PS is the most read part of any email. You know, like we all skim to the PS. It's like what did they miss? <laughs> you know, and the PS. Um, you could say PS. Here's a here's a great book I've read on business. Like let's say you're an accountant or something and you go, PS, here's my latest, greatest book I've read on um, business strategy or da, 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 or something, you know, like little, little um, tip, a little gold nugget. Look at it that way. A little seed of uh, some sort of gold nugget that you, um, that you put in there is always the, um, the way to go um, on that one. Yeah. What I thought, can I, can I share a little quick step before the next question? Just on, um, sure. I, I know um, I just thought I'll, I'll, um, share too because we, we we do a lot of this stuff with um ourselves like at basic bananas with our audiences and we have a there's a um what i thought i'd do and you mentioned before i could give you a little spiel on something we we um have as well 
But basically we have an event where you could attend for free. It's an online paid event. Um, the tickets are, are on sale on our website. Um, it's called the Marketing Blast Off Workshop because we go right in depth in a lot of this stuff and kind of how to put it together and how to differentiate online and um, build your online kind of marketing machine and also how to put together a one page marketing plan that we recommend to do every quarter um, in no matter what style of business you have to, to revisit. Um, it's a jam packed two hour session. It's paid, but if you guys as a little gift for uh, today and, and obviously as a, um, a, a thank you for being part of the, the studio and you guys, um, you can attend for free. If you go to Basic Bananas, it'll make you pay. <laughs> but what you could maybe do, if anyone on the session, maybe anyone on the session if you, for that, if you just comment and say name and email, um, for example, um, and then if you guys can, can share that with, um, with us, Mary at the end or whatever, you know, with my team afterwards from the, the comments and, um, and that way it'll make it really easy. Um, you can just basically share name and email and then my team, I'll just get um, Kayla here and my team to, to flick you an email and say, here's the dates. If you want a free ticket, um, you've got a free spot and you're more than welcome to attend that one for free. So it's called the Marketing Blast Off Workshop. If you want to check it out on basicbananas.com, but the website will make you pay. It is a paid event, but you guys can, uh, anyone can attend for free if you wanted to. Um, wow. On That's this. very generous of you, Christo. So we'll do share. Um, so anyone from the audience, if they are, if you are interested, please uh, do shoot um, or drop your name and email so that we can um, share you the webinar or the workshop that um, Basic Bananas is offering. Yeah. And another question. So thanks for a very insightful webinar, Christo. Do you have any growth hacking tips for startups with minimal resources in terms of time and money? <laughs> yeah, it's a good, good, good question. Um, yes, uh, like a, a lot. Where do I start? Um, there are a lot of things you can do, but the, the reality is um, starting to build familiarity with people as quickly as possible is always the key. Like the, the, what I mean by that is things like social media profiles, getting them set and just starting to, to build relationships. The quickest ways I'll ever see businesses grow the most rapidly having worked with well, basically thousands of different businesses now over the years now they involve a little bit of luck but every business does involve a little bit of luck i reckon to to you know be very very sustainably successful uh, successful and um but it's alliances with other businesses that already have a decent audience it might be a business could be an organization could be a person that's quite influential or something like that but aligning with the right people so rather than kind of like selling one to one, selling to people, you're selling through people or through organizations or through groups. So you get access to a bigger pool. Um, and then the other strategy we've seen businesses kind of blow up and grow uh, the most rapidly is um, uh, PR, like, like um, press, like getting media. Um, and you can be proactive yourself in terms of getting free media. Like there's processes to that, but you basically got to come up with angles for media to talk about and you're, you and your business are like a byproduct of that story. You've got to make it about humans or how it's impacting humans and things. And you submit those to media. It's like things like me being on TV. Um, and I was on 2UE for quite a while, 2GB as in Virgin In-Flight Entertainment. Um, all of these things, you can imagine the mass exposure we get through that stuff. And it's free. Even a lot of those ones, the radio was paying me per minute. I would have paid them. You know, they were paying me very well. <laughs> I, um, I like to calculate the rate per minute. Uh, but basically, um, I would have paid them. I was doing these, these regular segments on, um, on 2UE and 2GB at, at like about 8.30am. And, um, and basically, it was by providing value to them that they could share to the audience. Now, um, so basically, alliances, selling through people and also generating media like uh, exposure because you can get exposure to big audiences. That's what we look for for fast growth. I would be aiming to, th to do those things. And then in parallel at the same time, I'd be looking to build your own marketing kind of machine um, and definitely getting these things I've shared in terms of these funnels set up because as you then get new people's attention, you want to make sure you've got the systems to basically nurture them uh, because the reality is some people no matter how good your product or service is, some will buy today, some might take two years and everywhere in between, you know, some will take seven years. You want to make sure you're getting the return 
no matter when they decide. So you got you have to have these kind of relationship uh, funnels in place. All right, thank you, Krista, for that. So it's about banking on the people who know you. It's like what matters now is who know you and your business, and also the media exposure. Um, thanks for that. Um, if I may also add, so um, I'd just like to ask as well, since a lot of businesses have gone, you know, online, have done online marketing or have started doing online marketing because um, everybody just went digital um, during the pandemic, um, how do we get through um, the noise? I mean, there's just too much out there. Would you have any additional tips um, in order to um, differentiate ourselves with everyone else who are already doing it or have just started doing it? Um, do I mean doing online marketing? Yeah, yeah. The um, what like I agree to what happens a lot and a, a bit of a mistake is looking at other. What I think a lot of people tend to do is they look at others for inspiration, and so usually brands will look to the like the giant in their industry, or they look to someone who's doing it really well. Um, the the problem here is if they're doing it really well and we try to take what they're doing, we're going to stay in their shadows, right? Because they're doing it really well already. And so it's going to be very difficult to kind of be known for what they're known for. Um, they're already dominating that space. They're already inside people's heads for this thing they're known for. It's like any industry, if you thought of right now, like every industry, we work with all different industries. Everyone thinks that their own industry is more competitive than everyone else it's like everyone everyone has a ton of competition that's the reality however you could think of any industry right now and there'll be some brand that comes to mind like they're the the most dominant in that space there's some like i touched on earlier in the session there's some trigger thought that brings them to mind some point of difference and this is what it's about it's like looping back to what i was touching on earlier it's like what specifically do you want to be known for and how do you want to differentiate like what is different about the way you do things um, in your space? Because what we want to do is like, let's almost like a, a little exercise for people can be just like rule a piece of paper in half and write, here's everything we stand for a list on one side. And here's everything we stand against a list on the other side. And you, you list the things you stand for and against with your brand and your business to look to differentiate from, from competitors as you, as you kind of create the list, then look at who's already big in your industry. If there's someone that's already known for these things that you've just written down, change. You can't, it's not going to work. Like swap it out. Well, how are you going to be slightly different and different? And now you can differentiate through being known for a specific like service or product or style of service or product or how you do it. But also you should look to differentiate through personality of your brand. So part of what happens with marketing is, well, the way we work is every brand, we want to give it a personality like a human because humans connect with personality. So, and the reason we do this is it's a human trait. We can't help it. Psychologically, we connect to character. Like we like our friends because of their personality. We dislike that person because of their personality. We liked watching, you know, Seinfeld, the TV show because of the personalities because Kramer, George, Elaine and the writers intentionally amplify these personalities, right? That's what we connect with. And that's why we keep coming back. Um, a lot of the storylines, you might remember four or five of the episodes, but you remember six of the characters like that, you know, like you remember the characters. And so having a character, a personality and amplifying points of difference and being consistent with those. So we start to get inside people's head. Um, and just, yeah, like I touched on too earlier, in terms of what you put out, if it's not, if you haven't got something kind of be, of interest to say, just don't say it. Like there's no reason to kind of like force uh, boring content out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Christo. So if um, the participants or those who would be accessing the recording session of this um, lunch and learn, how do we reach to you and how they can reach you? And um, can you tell us more about your workshops in a bit? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. From us, yeah, I think the, the best thing to do, um, so, so with us, basicbananas.com is the, the, the business and Basic Bananas, you'll find all over, you know, social media and connect with us on those platforms as well. Um, the best thing to do though, I'd say is you're welcome to join, as I said, the Marketing Blast Off Workshop and it's, a, it's an awesome event. And to make it easy on you, yeah, you could just comment. I can see a few people commented already in there. Um, 
you can comment and basically with your name and email, we'll give you a free, um, a free ticket. And obviously no details are shared with anyone or anything like that, but we can get, you know, the team will get you registered. Um, so yeah, basicbananas.com is the, the best place to have a squeeze around. We share a lot of valuable content as well through our, um, uh, podcast. If you search on any podcast platforms for basic bananas, you'll see basic bananas radio come up. Um, a lot of resources on our website, but yeah, I'd say that that one you'll walk away with stuff you can just do right away, no matter what type of business you have, whether you're a, a startup or you're doing tens of millions and you've been in business for 40 years, we work with businesses on all different levels. So you'll get a ton of value out of that. Um, I'd say, check that out, check out basic bananas. And um, of course, check out the the further events that you guys offer the studio. Like you got more events. You, Mary, you already mentioned to me offline before. There's more events coming up next week as well. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. So tomorrow, we're looking forward to seeing you again um, for our business series: How a Little Creative Tech Startup Is Playing in a Big Space. So see you tomorrow at midday. And on Tuesday, we have our founder stories. We are featuring Mariam as Mohammed of Money Girl. Um, she's going to talk all about um, financial liter literacy and how she's running her social enterprise. So again, thank you, Christo, for um, guesting in our Lunch and Learn. And thank you for everyone who have joined us. Until next week, I am Mary. Um, join us again for the Studio Speaker Series.